Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru, and today we're going to be talking about some changes I am making to the way we test graphics cards, specifically in terms of power draw and also power efficiency. So, up until late last year, the only way we were able to measure power draw was with one of these, a simple wall meter. That is a fundamentally imprecise measurement, however, and it can only really give us a rough idea in the differences between power draw of different GPUs and nothing really more accurate than that. It certainly can't be used to try and calculate any performance per watt figures, at least not in an accurate way. Thankfully, in November, NVIDIA provided us with their power capture analysis tool, otherwise known as PCAT. Now, I really like PCAT because it's an easy way to measure power draw of the graphics card only, and if you're wondering, because it's from NVIDIA, it does work 100% fine with AMD GPUs as well. So PCAT is essentially comprised of two different parts. You have this circuit board, which is known as the PCAT module, and there you plug in your PCIe power connectors from your PSU. That PCAT module also connects to an X16 riser card via a four pin cable. So that means PCAT can accurately measure the power draw coming through the PCIe power cables and through the PCIe slot with all that data sent to the host system via USB. So like I said, we have had PCAT since late last year and the fact we're using it isn't what's new about this video. Rather, this video is all about how we're using PCAT in a smarter way to get more accurate power and power efficiency readings. To give you an idea of how I used to use PCAT though, basically I would run all of my game benchmarks first and then run a separate 30 minute stress test using either a game or 3 Mark time spy and calculate all of the power from that single 30 minute run. All of that data would end up in a massive Excel sheet which looks something like this and I'd be able to take an average of all of those power draw readings to present in a much more viewable way in a chart that looks something like this. To be clear, that is an absolutely valid way of testing power and the results would be accurate and generally representative of a GPU's power draw. The downside to that approach though is we're only testing a single scenario, in this instance a 30 minute time spy stress test. What we're not accounting for is any differences in power draw from game to game or from resolution to resolution. What we are doing now, however, is integrating our peak at power testing within our general game benchmarking. So instead of running all of our usual game benchmarks first and then running a separate power test, we're actually going to be using PCAT to take the power draw readings from the GPU as we are benchmarking each of the games we're going to be testing anyway. The reason we are able to do this is thanks to NVIDIA's FrameView tool. FrameView, if you don't know, is essentially NVIDIA's answer to OCAT, which is AMD's own benchmarking tool which we have previously used to gather average frame rates and also 99% low data. The only reason we are actually switching to FrameView is because it's an NVIDIA tool, it's able to interface with PCAT to show us power draw data from every single one of our benchmark runs. To show you exactly what that looks like, here we have the summary file which FrameView created after I benchmarked Cyberpunk 2077 on the RTX 3060 Ti. We can see the average frame rate and the 99% frame rate columns, which is what we need for all of our benchmark charts, of course. But there is also a PCAT power column, showing us average power draw from across the one minute benchmark run. So that in a nutshell is the key change we are making. Instead of just one single power draw test, we can now gather power data on not only a game by game basis, but also a resolution by resolution basis, giving us much more accurate data. If you're wondering just how much variation there is from game to game or from resolution to resolution though, I'll just show us a few examples and you may be surprised by the results. Starting with the differences in power on a game by game basis. Here we have the RTX 3060 Ti benchmarked over 12 games. Typically we can see that the measured power draw from this card was around 195 watts and that was very consistent. However, we can see instances like with Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Watch Dogs Legion 
where we saw some significant deviations from that average result. In our previous testing, where we only recorded power data from one scenario, the results would have gone unnoticed. As for the differences per resolution, here we can see about a 5 watt delta in the average power figures from the 1080p benchmarks compared to the 4K benchmarks. That might not be a lot of change, but again, if we'd only tested one game or one 3D Mark stress test at a given resolution, you begin to see how that doesn't tell the whole picture. Another key benefit of this testing is, because we now have power and frame rate data for every single game we test, we can be much more accurate with our performance per watt figures, allowing us to do performance per watt on a game by game basis. Previously, we would take the average frame rate data from across all the games we tested and divide that number by the average power draw reading from our single 30 minute stress test to give us performance per watt at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. However, as we have shown, power draw is not a constant across every game and every resolution. So with this new data, we can much more accurately show performance per watt to a much finer level. Take these average figures comparing the RTX 3060 Ti to the RX 6700 XT. At 1080p, the 3060 Ti is on average 5% more power efficient across the 12 games we tested. That's certainly good to know, but we can see that doesn't apply in every single scenario. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, for instance, the 6700 XT actually delivers higher performance per watt by a 4% margin. But then, in days gone, the difference is much larger, with a 20% swing in the 3060 Ti's favour. To put that into context, it's a bit like if we tested two different GPUs over 12 games, but then in our review, we only showed you the 12 game average frame rate for each GPU. While that certainly gives us an idea as to which GPU is faster overall, it certainly doesn't tell the whole story, as we know there could be significant performance differences from game to game. Now, with PCAT and this new way of power testing, we're able to accurately show performance per watt on a game by game and a resolution by resolution basis. So, that is it for what we're doing differently. In a nutshell, by being smarter with how we use NVIDIA's PCAT tool, Instead of just taking one average power draw and presenting that as the power draw figure for any given GPU, we can now test power draw on a per game and per resolution basis, while also inferring much more accurate performance per watt data from those numbers. You can expect to see this new method of testing roll out with our next batch of GPU reviews, but for now that really is it for this video. If you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. We'd really love to have any feedback on this. Why not chat with us over on Discord as well? You can also find a link to our merch store in the description where you can get a cool t-shirt like this one. And why not consider backing us on Patreon where you can see some of our content early and get access to exclusive giveaways. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic 4 Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.